All right, welcome back to the Handlebar Podcast. We are here. We are back with good friend Eniola. We love Eniola. We're going to jump right into the question today. This is a good one. Um, this one is submitted by Anonymous. Thanks, Anonymous. But we do know that Anonymous is 15, and Anonymous lives wow. in Homestead, Florida. Wow. Homestead. But then actually there's another question submitted by a 15-year-old from Homestead, Florida, and that's by Rosanna. So maybe just Rosanna didn't put her name on this one. <laughs> So Rosanna, we Rosanna. love you. We're gonna assume this don't was from you. Rosanna like that. Yeah. We love you, girl. Uh, you're you in Rose. family, Rosanna. We you love are. you. You don't have to be anonymous. You ever come to Dallas? We'll get coffee, oh. all of us. Eniola will fly in for it. I right? Will. Rosanna says this. She says, "How do you deal with religion? What is religion? And how do you know if you're practicing it?" Um, so I want to talk about. Let me talk about religion. I specifically, this word's not in the question, but I want to talk about the spirit of religion. And I'm going to set a timer. And as I set the timer, I'm going to I'm gonna quote my beautiful bride. And we can start here. You said this, Sarah Beth, on a previous episode. I don't exactly remember what all we were talking about, but you made a comment on the spirit of religion. And you said, the spirit of religion is anything of God void of the presence of God. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was such a beautiful, powerful uh, definition of religion. Specifically, though, on that day, I remember we posted that video and we started getting comments from people. They were time stamping the video where you said that with with comments like, can you uh, can you guys please unpack this a little more? So I have footnote noted that in my mind since that day. Um, But I would love to start there with the spirit of religion. Maybe you can talk about it a little bit, Sir Beth. But our timer has started. Religion. Uh, Yeah. Well, I remember I was sitting with um, a spiritual mama and actually we were in Ireland together and we had been asked to do a breakout session, uh, both of us, but specifically mine. Didn't they ask me to talk about religion? I don't remember, maybe. In, in Ireland? I think they did. Um, or they, they told me this is something that we feel like is um, like plaguing our land. Um, the spirit of Can religion. Can you talk about it? Can yeah. you talk about it? And I was just sitting in the back of um, sound check. I think you were sound checking, Eniola. And I was like, Lord, this feels weighty. Like this, this, and and I, I think I've like lived this. I think you've 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 broken a spirit of religion off me, and you're still breaking it. But but I don't even. So I was sitting with my spiritual mom, and I'm like, What? Will you help me unpack this? Like, what does this? even mean it's like I can I can feel it and I know the Lord's done it in me but I I want to learn about it and that's when she said with tears in her eyes and I think that that's key what it, what's that quote um tears break oh tears gets the witchcraft, witchcraft out it's that's Bob Jones out of your eyes. yeah wow. so she had tears in her eyes and um she said religion is um religion is anything of God void of the presence, the person of God. Hmm. So it can be good things like reading your Bible, going to church, doing a podcast, posting the post, whatever it is, whatever you're doing. But if it's void of the presence of God, it's in vain and it's Hmm. religion. Hmm. And so I just, I remembered her saying that. And then as I was, as I was talking um, in the breakout session, that what they wanted to hear was, um, which is beautiful, but it was like, talk to us about revival. We want to, we want to see revival in our land. And so, I was like, well, I think revival. Well, one, I know it's in, it's in family, but if we're just doing, doing something for the sake of doing it, oh. like preaching the gospel, just to do it, and it's void of the person. Wow. of Christ, of the person of void the Holy of Spirit, yeah. void of his presence, which presence means face, his Whoa. face, like the bread of the presence that David talks about, the face of God. Mm-hmm. If it's void of that, void of intimacy, yeah. then it's just dry religion. Yeah. And this is all throughout the scriptures. Yeah. I see you flipping and you yeah. <laughs> like it's everywhere. It I want to say this for some that are listening. Maybe they've never heard. Maybe they hear religion and they go, oh, yes, I'm, I'm a Christian. I practice religion. And there's, in case there's a disconnect with what we're talking right, about. Yeah, there totally can um, be. Is that Christianity is a religion. Yeah, it is. It's not a bad word. No. Right. Um, but uh, we're talking about, you know, there's that quote that, uh, if anything, has become cheesy, but it is so true. 
it's that we're not after religion, we're after relationship. Yeah. It's not religion, it's not relationship. And what we're talking about is you can practice everything of God. You can do your entire life right. You can even ca- you can even move in the spirit, cast out demons, mm-hmm. ha- heal the sick, and there'll be a day where you stand before the Lord and he say, I never knew you. And that is he a scary thing. He doesn't say, you didn't know me. He said, I never knew I you. I never knew you. It's and, about and intimacy. religion or the law, the letter kills, Paul says. Right. Yeah. But it's the spirit that gives life. And we're talking about deep uh, relationship and intimacy with Jesus. Mm-hmm. If you're going to call yourself a believer, well, what are you a believer in? You're a believer in Jesus. He died. He rose again. He, uh, he is alive. He ascended to the Father. And now we are being restored back into union with God, meaning we get to walk with him. Mm-hmm. We get to know him. We get to live by his voice. We get to mm-hmm. live by his presence, his spirit every day, knowing you are my daily bread. Your voice is my daily bread. Your spirit is my life source. It's my compass. It's my guide. I can only take this life on by the spirit. Yeah. And and there's so many people that they're they're operating in the dry oil rub of just dead works, mm-hmm. uh, and they're wondering why there's no so life many. in the things of God. And that's what we're talking about. I would say yeah. if you're there, you're you're probably operating under the spirit of religion. Mm-hmm. Me too. At times, yeah. Still yeah. Now, yeah, it's not like <laughs> I find myself yeah. under the law is what the kind of the language I think I would use. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I am I'm looked up the definition of religion because I was just that's like, good, let's yeah. look. And there's one here that says a particular system of faith and worship. And then it described the origin, the Latin word, which the original word comes from to bind. Hmm. And then it developed into this other word, religio, religio. I'm I'm reading it like Spanish, Um, which means obligation, bond, and reverence. And so the word obligation is sticking out to me because... Wow. If you were to tell Sarah Beth, I'm taking you on this date, but it's just out of obligation, then it removes the purpose of the date. Yeah. Sarah Beth yes. would probably tell you, I don't want to go don't on have this to date. Do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. can go wherever you were going to go by yourself. <laughs> and when you figure <laughs> out <laughs> like, what's going on, come back and like, be vulnerable with me. Right. Wow. And so I think Ooh, when you. Yeah, like That's God. It. The way we were designed to be in the garden with God is nothing between us and him yeah. in communion. And so the the law comes in because of shame and because of sin. And it's this it's this reminder. Mm-hmm. Hebrew says it's a reminder of our sinfulness. Yes. Right. So it's the cross, the purpose, the one of the primary purposes of the cross is to remove the law as a rubric and establish relationship first. Yes. So what religion would try to do is attempt to get a son to start thinking like a servant again. Wow, this is Galatians 3. Yes. Yes. Galatians 3 starts out, and Paul says, who has bewitched you? He calls it witchcraft. He says, did you receive the spirit by the hearing of faith or by the works of the law? And he goes, so then why would you continue then in the works of the law if the spirit comes by the hearing of faith? He likens it to witchcraft. He's like, you you are under witchcraft thinking that you can earn the spirit. It's by what you do. It's by the works of the law. It's by the hearing of faith. But the tears get the witchcraft out, which is crazy because tears is normally a result of an intimate yes. relationship. Yes. And I'll never My forget. My God has fallen. Yes. I'll yeah. never forget like oh. four or five years ago, it was Easter Sunday. Jesus. And I loved Easter Sunday growing up. And there were so many beautiful things about it. But I felt myself starting to get into obligation, mm-hmm. into what you're talking about, Rafi, like the definition of religion, one of yeah. them, which is obligation of even like, I got to have a new dress. I got to look a certain way. I got to, and I think I was leading worship that morning. So I was like, well, the dress that I think I should wear, I don't think I want to wear that leading worship because I don't feel super comfortable. It was just this thing of like what I've always done. Buy a new dress, wear a new dress. Is that bad? No. But I was just getting into going through the motions of Easter. And I remember being like, Lord, I, I'm i tired of this. So I got up a couple hours before I was going to go to sound check, And I was like, God, I'm so like, will you encounter me on Easter Sunday? Like, I'm, I... I can't just keep doing what I've done. Like there's, it's dead. It's dead works, right? And he took me to Luke where the women come to the tomb. And the angel says, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. And I heard him say, why are you looking for me in the tomb of religion, of dead works? Religion is a tomb. 
and it will produce dead works. Yes. And something shifted. I started crying like I am right now, and I felt his presence, and I said, Lord, I, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to look for you here. I, I, I want. I want the the living God, a relationship with the living God. Like, yes. I, uh, maybe I won't wear a dress today. Like, I don't know. And it's not about we're not wearing a dress or wearing a dress. But what I'm saying is, I was so used to going through the motions, so used to the thing that you do on Easter Sunday, that I was missing the living person, the risen one. Jesus. And I think that's what religion will cause us to do is to miss the living person of Jesus and to just put our heads down, put the right clothes on and do the thing, the Christian thing. And my goodness, like that is a trap. It's a trap. And I remember at our women's conference a couple years ago, I was teaching a breakout session and I was like, Lord, I just want to say what you're saying. And, and all I heard him say is tell him that religion is a trap. Like it's a trap to where you could be it's like I saw this picture of a bird in a cage that doesn't know that the door's open and he's flying around and he's hitting the sides of the cage like flying flying but then there's a door that's open and the door that's open is the cross like Jesus went to the cross the veil was torn religion's head was cut off and relationship was restored between us and the father but what religion would do is it would cause me to live like that bird which is hitting just hitting the walls not knowing that the door is open to relationship to intimacy yes yeah i i i think i'm in first john right now and it says um it says from verse seven it says let little children let no one deceive you Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Um, this is bars. There's bars in the scripture. Uh, let me say, he says the devil been sinning since the beginning, okay? Um, <laughs> and then you go down to verse 10. It says, by this it is evident who are the children of God. And who are the children of the devil? Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Um, It's so funny because I've been in this interesting journey personally where I've been trying to, I've been trying to continue to engage the Lord on a regular basis, consistently in his word, in prayer, in loving people, because love is action. All these things without like paying too much attention to how I feel about it. Does that make sense? And the reason I've been doing that is because I found myself at some point where, because I lead worship, I would be worshiping. And then all of a sudden when I would feel insecure on stage, my feelings would dictate what was true all of a sudden. So if the Lord is saying, Eniola, I'm here, I'm present, I'm moving. I'm over here like, I know, but I feel like you're not. And the Lord started to teach me, it's, it's the word obligation that you used. That word obligation and even the concept of devotion is what you were saying. It's the reason the tears come out. I don't show up before the scriptures because I don't, because I have to prove to God that I love him. At the same time, because I love him, I show up at the scriptures. And so devotion and even my obligation, like the, the motivation behind this obligation in my heart is because of what he's done. He is secured. Like the law is no longer the thing that's in the back of my mind that I'm like thinking about. Religion has no hold on me. The spirit of religion has no hold on me because the weird thing is sometimes we think religion is discipline. Like sometimes we mix them up. They were like, right? Like we think it's religious to read my Bible every day. We think it's religious to to choose a lifestyle of holiness, like of being yeah. set apart. Right, like that's a limitation of yeah. not what your father when s- actually knows is best for you. Religion yeah. is me just looking at the vine and cutting it off and choosing to keep going. Wow. Because he said, you can do nothing apart from me. Nothing. I battle religion when I abide, John 15, in the vine. I stay connected. I didn't get this. This grace didn't show up out of thin air and then i was like i choose you god right <laughs> the bible says he chose us we love because he first he first loved, loved us. us so religion is actually me looking at the wrong end of the vine wow like it's looking at the fruit end and me thinking oh i did this. if that's what oh, yeah oh my goodness but religion does not look over there religion looks at the vine dresser 
and the and the one who and the vine himself and goes i'm a branch off of this thing so everything i'm doing is to maintain what i have not in my own strength but by the grace he gave me everything we have was given to us i love how us. you said because i love him because i it's because <laughs> like there's a because in the sentence it's so beautiful. and so we, yeah but it, so but it yeah. matters the order like, it, that's what it is the love because like i don't first love yes because i don't like if you the only place i've seen the word religion is in james yeah and so pure religion yeah i actually wanted to throw could i throw something please, in there please because i was reading it and thinking he's he says religion that is pure and undefiled before god the father is this to visit orphans widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world mm -hmm. and then also the next part i'm wondering if there shouldn't have been a chapter break he basically <laughs> says don't treat rich people or people of influence better than poor people oh, no. so i'm like okay in this list of three things what do they all have in common i never feel like doing them wow and so when you started to talk about when my feeling of insecurity came in and then it began to dictate what is true, right. that was a form of, that's a form of that religion. That is a form of religion. Because you're leading worship going, well, I've got, I have to be like true to what I'm feeling. That's a form of religion where, where I'm thinking of a story that Dan Moeller to told. While he was preaching, he had these sexually explicit images come across his brain. He's yeah. like, I don't struggle with this. I don't know where this is coming from. And he said he was tempted to go into shame of like, I'm about to teach this class. And look what's coming up in my mind, like, like you yeah. with the insecurity. But instead, he's like, I'm a son. So, so what, how, like, how, would I how am I going to respond to this as a son? And he said he stood up in his chair and just to begin to confess who he was. I'm holy. I'm set apart. You delivered me. I'll never, I'll never, I've never struggled with this. I won't struggle with this ever again. Mm -hmm. And as he began to confess, he felt the presence of God and the whole room, people began to get delivered of their addiction to pornography. Like as he was just confessing his identity as a son. Through relationship. Yes, wow. through relationship. And yes. so he took what yes. the spirit of religion was Dang. trying to lord over him. Look at you. Who are you? Like you're, you've got so you far to go. He, and yeah. he turned it around literally on the enemy. You tried to get me to feel shame and preach from this place of shame. Well, I'm just going to confess who I am before God. And now this whole room is getting delivered of the thing you tried to throw at me. And so I think, I think as I as I heard you tell that story, I was like, "Oh, religion is such a trap." There's a life trap. and godliness. Yes. yes. We, and I think too, yes. you know, it's talking about un, un, what is it? Pure and undefiled religion is loving the orphan and the widow. Yeah. I think when you're operating in the spirit of religion, your eyes are on yourself, thinking, "What do I need to do?" to be able to be at a healthy place. Yeah. Like, oh, I need to read my Bible today because that's how I'll know I'm loved and reminded, okay, I'm in a good place with God. And we don't, we would never teach that, yeah. but we operate that way. And I think the spirit of God will cause you to get outside of yourself because you didn't earn what you have. Period. You don't deserve what you had. Yep. And you get outside of your yourself and you realize everything I have was a free gift and it positions you Ooh. to be able to give to, to yes. others. And then there's life and godliness. Mm -hmm. And it's not out of obligation. Because I don't know about you guys, but if I'm obligated to do something, most of the time, there's not a lot of life in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fun. It's not, I don't want to do it. I'm obligated. And I, I'm, I should do this or I should do that. And I lived so much of my life being like, I should do this. And I should have my quiet time. And I should go to church. And I should. And then somewhere in high school, I was like, this is not going to get me very far. And I remember telling a leader in my life, like, I'm there's got to be more like yeah. what I, i'm missing something yeah. what am i missing i'm missing something and religion will keep you from his feet yes oh. it will keep you from pouring out your heart and your oil at the feet of jesus it will keep yes. you from relationship it will keep you from intimacy Come if aaron on, and i operated out of a spirit of religion in our marriage we probably wouldn't have three kids like there wouldn't be oh, but fruit God for them three but wow. listen there wouldn't be fruit yes. of our love yes come on and it's like lord is there fruit of of our love is there intimacy in our relationship yes. because if not i'm just doing things out of obligation oh. and that will cause burnout yes. and i don't think the people in the scriptures who casted out all the demons and said lord lord didn't we do all these things in your name i looked at that as a kid and i was like oh those are bad people no they were operating in the spirit of religion yeah. 
And that's so easy for us to fall into. And what does that mean? That means they were doing those things. They were casting out the demons. They were doing all the things out of obligation, out of, well, I should do this because this is the right thing. Or I should. And he's like, but I didn't know you. Like there's a place in Christ. There's a place that he purchased, not just for me to know about him. Yes but to know him and for him to know me. Yes. Like wow. intimately. I love Sir Beth. Uh, that there's tears she in your eyes. I, know. I do love Sir Beth. You do love her. <laughs> I love right now that there are tears in your eyes. Yes. And I'm thinking uh, my all-time favorite prayer set that I've ever been a part of was with you two. Mm. And it was in this last year. And we were praying and we were praying. I don't even remember what we were praying about. But I started having this thought, um, we, we so esteem Mary, and we so esteem David. It's that kind of two people in the church that we all long to, like if someone gives you a prophetic word and they're like, you're like Mary of Bethany, pour out your oil, we're like, yeah. oh, thank you God, you know. Or someone says, you're just like a David. Yeah. We're like, oh, we, yes, I'm a worshiper. And I started thinking, what did those two have in common? And David was known as one who would cry in a cave. And Mary was one who, who washed Jesus' feet with her tears. And I started thinking, Lord, I, I bet it wasn't the craft of David's poem that moved you. I bet it, I bet it was the tears. And I started thinking of Mary. I bet it wasn't even, you know, Judas is like, that oil is so expensive. We could sell that. And I'm thinking, Lord, you probably weren't even thinking this is expensive stuff. I bet it was the tears. And all of a sudden I found myself weeping again, going, Lord, uh, I bet it was the tears that moved you, you know, and then Rafi is skillful. So you start singing, you start basically singing that. And then I'm just done. I feel like God, I'm, my heart is being opened again. But why do I share that story? Because, uh, I, I think tears are a gift from the Lord. You know, we said it, Bob Jones says tears get the witchcraft out, but I think, I think tears uh, keep your heart open before the Lord. Yes. Tears break down every dam that that you have built up. Tears, there's something about tears that you're reminded of who he is and what he's done for you. There's something about tears that that truly are a gift. Corey Russell says that tears are a gift. And well, scripture says also that he saves our tears in a bottle. He saves our tears in a bottle. Everyone and he gives keeps. you like what your tears mean. Like Sarah Beth said, tears are a sign of vulnerability. Tears are a sign of your heart opening. And they're a sign of honesty of like when you start to open up about your pain or even your joy, that's when tears start to flow. And so it gives you this perspective of what is important to God. And I feel like religion often touts like, I know what's important to God. Because look, it's in, the, it's in the word. But the word says he doesn't store Mary's oil. He doesn't, that, that, it says heaven and earth will pass away, all material things, but he stores these tears in a bottle. Whoa. There's something that he's looking for in our hearts that can be, that can be measured in tears. Mm. And, and I think like that's mm, like, it, like so much of what you said, it, you search the scriptures for in them, you find life, but you refuse to come to me. Come to it's me. all, and like, okay. I know I'm probably jumping. I could just jump into my handlebar, yeah, but I'm could. thinking about the scripture. Knowing God is et eternal life is knowing God. Yeah. It's, it's John 17. That's it. Right. It's just knowing God. And so I think about your marriage again, and I think about the scripture of religion and what he's asking is it's like almost like you are sort. I want you to be obligated towards these kinds of things because there'll be days where you don't feel it. There'll be days where you don't want to take care of the orphan and the widow. There'll be days where you don't want to stay undefiled from the things of the world. But I'm telling you, do this even when you don't feel it. Mm. But, the, but the date night, you got to feel that. If you're not feeling that, something's wrong. There yeah, needs to need be some something counseling. addressed. But if you guys just got in a fight and Aaron needs to take the garbage out, he still needs to take the garbage out, even if he doesn't feel how I love. Feel. Yeah, it's like not. So relationship provokes this tension of I need my heart. I need to feel love oh. in these times. And I also need to be faithful 
with these things and yes. it, only a relationship can provoke yes. you to that place yeah. yes. to where you are so in love with Sarah Beth it produces a child which then provokes you to be the most selfless mm. that you've ever had to be because well. now you've got three children it's the same desire and so I think that's why that's really the opposite of why relationship is the opposite of religion because mm. you cannot remove that relational part it will lead wow. you to all the all the sides yeah I'm like, maybe Sir Bush should just pray for everyone. Listening. I was thinking I'd love to pray. Yeah. I can I say yes, yeah, of course thing. you can. I, I think something that I have been processing is because like in school I'm learning about a bunch of different religions, mm. and so I had to write this paper on a specific religion, and you know talk about things that make you cry. It was me reading about this religion because one of their number one, ugh get some heart every time one of their number one things is that god cannot be known that's like how they frame their religion okay. is like god cannot be known they believe in a monotheistic god they believe um they believe a lot of similar things about us but two things is they don't believe he can be known and they don't believe he would ever subject himself to becoming a human being and die for his for his people like how could i serve a god who would do that and so I like I was I spent like weeks studying this religion and reading about where it started from and all the things that the whole faith because it's one of the youngest religions out there the whole faith is based on human beings saying I got a revelation from God this is what we have to do next I got a revelation from God this is what we have to do next and if you don't get it from me then you don't have it and and as I was studying about them I and I I wrote a poem I wrote a song but I, I was so gripped by how painful it is to exist on the earth with a reality in your mind that God cannot be known and I thought to myself the one of the powers of the spirit of religion in a negative way is that it, it you everyone is walking on something everyone has a framework that they are approaching God with everybody does if you don't think he's a good father then you won't respond to him like a father. If you don't think he's good, you won't respond to him good. So everyone has a framework. This religion's framework is that God cannot be known. So what is the fruit of their religion? Well, it's funny, their religion is all about diversity. It's all about equality. It's all about making the world a better place. And as I was reading that, I was like, that's crazy. Because you don't have a thread of life in your religion and God can't be known you have to bring his you have to bring whatever his kingdom would be to earth yourself you have to figure it out wow. and then when you go alone by yourself there's nobody there with you mm. it's just whatever you think your religion is and I thought about all, us why Christianity is a religion that flows on relationship is one because we are the only ones who have a living God not only that, but this living God came on earth and made the way for us to know him. And I think the beauty, I, I, I speak of the spirit of religion as what you like, it's so demonic. What we are calling the spirit of religion is so demonic because it's, it goes, it goes, hey, you do have to sacrifice animals to get into the Holy of Holies. Mm. You, the cross wasn't enough for you. Um, you do have to feel or not feel your way into his presence like you wow. do have the blood to, like of jesus the blood the of most jesus is not the most po the powerful the substance earth. like your tears are fake the joy of your salvation it ended the moment you got saved oh. um sanctification it's like keeping us you in have a trap keep, yeah it's like it's sanctification like you have to figure that out oh, you got to figure out how to stay There's sanctified no relationship. and i think like th my handlebar is is that you <clears throat> and this might sound upside down. I'm realizing that when you don't know what the Bible says about this faith that we have, oh. then you will make up what it does. So when you think about being sanctified, purified, set apart, you will try and uphold what God initiated. Wow. When actually wow. the spirit of God is called the Holy Spirit, not just because he's God, but because he's the one who makes us holy. Yes. The person of Jesus Christ is alive in me by the spirit. I am alive. 
the own the connection I have is is Jesus by his spirit. And so this word is alive because of the spirit. It says it is alive, living, mm-hmm. active, sharper than any two edged sword. But I can't access any of that if I'm not in relationship with him. Yeah. I can only come boldly before him because of the blood that he shed. Yes. And so religion wants to keep you in this mushy place where you take bits and pieces of all the things that everyone has ever said about God and you create a patchwork of your faith in God as opposed to going, wait, what does the Bible say about relationship? What does the Bible say about tears? What does the Bible say about life? What does the Bible say about the blood? Mm -hmm. And so my handlebar is, I kind of said this in another episode, but the Bible... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> read the Bible. It's so good. Like read the Bible yes. because and let the Bible read you and let it read you. It. Like do like it has to because it's a it's a two way street. Like uh. you have to because it's the this is the only if we are believe what we say we, the one true living God and every other God is an idol with no eye. Like I think it was mm-hmm. the Psalm mm-hmm. one fifteen. They can't hear see talk even this is the only one that has a living god yes then i need to be with him i need to i want to walk with him in the cool of the day yes like he not only is the living god but he's the living father yes he's like the bread of life i need him desperately but also he wants to give himself to me so good and so i i I hope that makes sense this longing of like hold fast to the faithfulness of being true to what this says because he's alive yeah. Anyway, Amen. that was a lot. So I'm going to give my handlebar and then you can pray and land us, Sir Beth. Uh, mine is going to be to get in a room with God and ask him to speak to you. Yes. <laughs> get in a room with him and ask him to speak to you. And he'll speak to you through the scriptures, but he'll speak to you by his voice as well. And I want to declare if, you, if you've been listening to this conversation and you feel your heart beating and you feel like, oh. wow, there's more, get in a room and ask him, God, will you speak to me? Mm -hmm. And watch what will happen. Write down what you hear. um, And watch how the scriptures come alive. I love what you're saying, getting the scriptures. And then it says, I'm quoting Sarah Beth again, but she always says there's a man behind the pages. You took my handle. When you you let the scriptures read you, what's happening is you're encountering the man behind the pages. So, Sarah Beth. Okay, well, I was going to say that, but it's okay. Because there's another one. Mine would be when I was in the season of my life where I knew there was more, but I didn't know what to do or where to go. I went to someone trusted and I said, what is going on with me? Like, can you, can you help me unpack this? Like, I feel like there's more, but I don't know what that is. And they took me to a scripture in, I think it's second Timothy, but it says fan into flame the gift that God has given you. And I realized, oh man, like I'm missing fire. And you could, you could say like baptism of the Holy Spirit. Have you been sure. baptized? I believe in that, but I don't want to get into, you know, the nitty gritty of that because that's a bigger conversation. But I was missing the fire of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so my handlebar is, this is what I did. I found someone in my life. God showed me someone in my mind. Like I've kind of made fun of these people. I have thought they were weird. And the Lord said in that moment, you need to go to them and ask them about this. Wow. So if if that is you and you feel like there's more and there's for me there were two people specifically in my life that i was like oh they're a little different than me and god's like that's the point they have what you're looking for and so i went to them and i got filled with the holy spirit in a new and fresh way that i'd never experienced before so my handlebar is go find those people in your life that are like the most unassuming they know the lord and there's something just a little bit different like there's just they're free okay (laughs) and ask them about it and if you don't have that because i know not everybody has that um then sit with the lord like aaron said and i would say you okay a lot of times (laughs) i would say if you haven't it's crazy to me how we can cry about certain things we Mm -hmm. could i could cry to you i could Mm -hmm. cry about something i'm feeling stressed i'm but ask yourself have i or when is the last time that i had fresh tears before the Lord, wow. alone, just me and him. That is beautiful. Have I cried there? 
have I had fresh tears there? And if not, ask him for it. Like mm-hmm. ask him in your car, ask him in your home, ask him at your workplace, ask him in the coffee shop, ask him where you're eating lunch, wherever you are right now, ask the Lord yes. for fresh tears and that the Holy Spirit would reveal Jesus to you and that Jesus would reveal the Holy Spirit. Yes. So I'm just going to pray and land us. Lord, I thank you that you didn't die for us to stay in a tomb of dead works and religion. You didn't stay in the tomb. You are alive. You defeated death. You rose again. And so, God, I thank you for everyone listening. And um, I pray, Lord, for a fresh baptism yes. in the Holy Spirit yes. and an in intimacy. God, I pray that fire would hit cars right now, would hit people at their yes. house, would hit people at work, at coffee shops, Lord, wherever they are listening right now. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done in my life, how you've cut the head off the spirit of religion, off of the, sh- I should spend time with you. I should go to church. I should serve. I should. All that got me was anxiety and, oh, I actually don't want to do any of these things. And I don't even know if I love God anymore. And I know there are some of you out there that feel that way and you're asking, what am I missing? And you're missing the person of the Holy Spirit, a baptism of fire. And so I thank you, Lord, that you're an all consuming fire and that you would consume those listening right now. God, you would give fresh tears, Lord. You would open hearts that have been so bound by pain their entire lives. And I thank you, Lord, that you are alive and you're going to do this because you love us. It's not that I love you. It's that you love me. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening, guys. We love you.